order. Um, and do a current voting member determination. Uh, I don't know whether or not David has been sworn in yet, although I believe you guys have he's been him. voted in. So by the selectmen. Right. So if he's sworn it although either he's already sworn as a he has to be sworn as a member. Mm -hmm. um, but still um, I have no idea. Kathy's not here tonight, so uh Huntley uh, as usual, you, you get an opportunity to be a voting member. Once in a while. Yeah. It's where Once in a while. Yeah, almost every time. Seems every day. year. Every month. Just about. Yeah. Just about. Um, and uh, I'm still expecting Sarah, but based on the weather, she may not be able to make it. Or it may take her longer to get Treacherous driving out there. It's treacherous. Well, it's a little bit slippery. Yeah. No, it's not bad. <coughs> I think you would have probably the worst shot at it, right? Yeah. From where you're at? Yeah. I mean, you're at the top of the hill. Yeah. And they repaved it, and right at the bottom of the road, the water uh, is leaking out of the uh, the asphalt and uh, freezes up right at, the, right at the bottom, right when you got hit. The brakes. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 love, I, I love the sled. I'm Whitney Hill, right? Yeah. Never noticed that before. Well, no, it's it's new since they uh, since they paved it. Yeah, huh. somehow. Huntley, <clears throat> I'm, I'm looking for a good plumber to put in a new dishwasher. Do you know anybody? Not me. Not you. Like I called <laughs> your son. I called your son. He didn't help either. Yeah, <laughs> there's a few, but boy, it's it's hard to get anybody to return a call. Is it it's just a replacement? Yeah, they're making so much money. Dude. Just a replacement? Yeah. You can do that. I, I did. I did half of it, but I got to a point where uh, I don't want to flood my face. <laughs> uh, you know, I stopped those those over three or four years yeah. ago. They, they, some, some of the new ones get to be a real pain. So I, I just stopped doing them. I don't do anything frustrating anymore. Well, well, anyway. Pete, Peter asked me if it had a steel tub, and it does. And he said, "Oh my God, that takes four hours." It does sometimes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, sometimes it's embarrassing because okay. people do it. There's too many pages for me to read. Yeah, yeah. 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 they do. You know, it's hot. It's hot off the presses. Oh, it's hot. I believe it. Yeah, I need you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, all right, uh, we're supposed to be looking at minutes. We review minutes. We have two sets of minutes to look at. We have minutes from the October 10 meeting and the October 24 meeting. I have a motion to approve both sets of minutes. Is that correct? A second. You beat me to it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, good. Make it up for last time. Um, we do have on our agenda an opportunity for public comment on items not before the planning board this evening. Uh, the items on the planning board, if you've not seen the agenda, include a, a, we're going to have a discussion about a letter received from Lukowitz uh, on short term rentals, an update on the capital improvements plan if it's possible, and then we're going to get the heck out of Dodge. Um, I have one. The uh, Let's see, the Tilney yes. uh, mm -hmm. subdivision that we approved yes. was incorrect. The state road is a three-rod road. Yes. And it was uh, labeled a two-rod road by the surveyor, by the engineer, and I won't register that because that will that become a fight someplace down the line. Not at the present because I don't think there's any issues, but we can't, it, it's incorrect. Okay, it has not been signed off? No. I don't it has, no, it has, I have not signed off. Right, okay, good. I can say it has not been signed off. Um, and because there was some pushback about the mylar and yep. they wrote. So we need to request an updated mylar with? They've been requested. Okay. So I'm just throwing that in. All right, it has not been signed off. And it didn't take, it took me a couple of hours to find that out from the state. It's, yeah. you know, so, it was that right away, as far as 
Two rod, yeah. three rod? They called it a two rod, and I questioned that tonight. But he said, no, no. I don't know what his standard he was going, I think. Um, Stonewall to Stonewall or something like that. And so I called the state and said, you know, what do you have on your records? And they said, it's a three rod road from the loop here in Jackson Village to uh, Maroon Road. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. And it's state, yeah. Yeah, right. state yeah. highway to yeah. Maroon Road. So which is, I think that's, yeah, that, that sounds exactly right. Okay. Yeah. Black Mountain Road is similar to that as far as that. Because I know right away. Right, for the, for the five mile line, line it's all three, three so right down lower. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a score that's correct. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, so it's already been requested. I don't need to do anything. Good. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Sometimes I just take things in my own hands. Appreciate that. That's what I have to do. I appreciate that. <laughs> Um, so this is an opportunity for public comment on anything that's not on the agenda. Do we have any? All right, hearing none, we will move on and we're doing really well catching up on our agenda time. Um, the next item is uh, regarding the letter. We should have a copy and that's what we're scrambling on to make sure everybody has a copy of the letter from um, uh, Jim Lukowitz, Jack James, Jim. I'm Jim. Um, <laughs> from James. <coughs> But uh, um, regarding uh, an activity on the Ellis River Village Association granting an easement, um, this letter was addressed to me. I, uh, the reason I'm bringing it up before the board is because um, I don't have the ability to respond to it directly uh, based on what I, my reading is of the information that's here. Um, and I want to open it out to the board to discuss whether or not this is something that we should be looking at from planning board or if this is something that uh, ought to be before the select men or whether or not this is something that ought to come up as a result of a um, an application for a driveway uh, that would normally occur as part of a compliance process that needs to occur whenever you uh, do a driveway uh, development. And I don't know the answer to that. And yeah, yeah, I mean, my kind of thing. got smarter people around the table than I. Everything I've seen looks either more enforcement, so therefore select men, or potentially legal. But in either case, I don't really see anything in the planning board. I would see, say, the town attorney should look into it. Um, I've already made a, a, an initial request at that, and um, there, no one's responding back on that at this point. There is nothing that suggests that it is an, a town issue at this point. Um, a, a, a private organization can make a choice to do whatever they did if they did it within their guidelines of what they're supposed to do. Um, it's not something for the town to really consider. Um, if an application is made for the driveway, um, however, then the, uh, the, the the building inspector person, whoever is acting on behalf of the selectmen, would normally review the application and determine whether or not it's all up to snuff, uh, if it's appropriate. Um, if there is question about the legality of, of any of this, um, that would not be in the planning board. Uh, we are not a compliance function. We, are, we do not do any enforcement of any kind uh, at the planning board. Um, we do reviews of things that uh, are proposed uh, and those proposals usually result from someone making changes to their uh, you know, property lines or how they're going to use their property um, and are all uh, prescribed under our, our regulations. There's nothing in our regulations specifically that uh, speaks to this. <coughs> I can see. I did my homework. Um, and to the extent I did my homework, there's nothing in our regulations that say that um, we would have a review or, or review our review unless uh, there was uh, an action that occurred 
as a result of uh, a development uh, or someone presenting something to us as a change. Uh, and you know, again, I'm, I'm looking for additional support here from my, my board members who are, have a lot more experience. Than I me. think it goes to the building inspector and then the selectmen. Uh, the selectmen are really the enforcement agency for the town. Mm -hmm. That's where it all comes. They, you know, we we get re recommendations from all spots, but uh, the selectmen do the actual um, enforcement. So I would think that have you talked to the building inspector? May I speak? Sure. Please, yes. I did speak with the building inspector um, a couple of times, but it was before I realized that this land was part of a subdivision approved by the uh, planning board. I believe it was just a private lot, and Kevin said if it's a private lot, anybody can do whatever they want on their private lot. It probably has to conform with the driveway you know, specifications. Uh, but then I realized that part of the subdivision uh, it was approved by this board, and I also realized after writing this letter that the enforce I talked to the state and they kindly told me the enforcement of planning board decisions and actions rely on the selectmen. So this letter probably should have gone to the selectmen. Um, and I'm happy to do that. But I was hoping that we could get an opinion or uh, some comments from the planning board to the selectmen, which is basically going to uh, redo this letter to the selectmen. And while I'm not an attorney, it just seems straightforward to me as a layperson if the planning board approves a subdivision and sometime later the developer or someone else comes along and changes it that there has to be some enforcement otherwise a developer would come before you get it approved and two well, weeks later do whatever they, they want they're not do what they want right? <laughs> and and you know i think in this case at least from my perspective um other people, uh, Nestle Nook and Wentworth people have mentioned to me have asked for revisions to this subdivision application, submitted the appropriate paperwork, and, and what happens is you, you look at it, there's a public meeting, abutters get to voice their concern. Mm -hmm. In this case, n nothing. It was sort of done under the guise of darkness. Um, so I'm happy to send this letter and some additional information to the selectmen. But it would be useful, I think, for the purposes of what we're concerned about, which is a 50-year-old well, for one thing, yeah. which I can show you a picture of if you like, <laughs> that's a, a sunken well. It has uh, you know, galvanized pipes. The infrastructure is very brittle. And now people are going to propose to have heavy equipment, you know, put a driveway right next to it. That's our, that's our, that's well, my concern. And you say it, it's, a, it's a community well. well. Yes. Is that correct? That's correct. It's a shared well. He and and it should have places. at least a uh, 75 foot, if not 150 foot. Be, being a community well, it may take a 150 foot radius. It doesn't serve more than um, 10 people. It currently only serves uh, three, perhaps four. In the okay, case. so it's at least then a 75 foot well radius that should not be infringed upon. Well, and, and, and these are the things that I think in fairness to the people sharing the well need to be brought to, some, to somebody in the town to take a look at. Um, so I'm happy to write a letter to the selectmen if they're the, an enforcement authority. That's what yep, the state said when great read your regs. There it was. I missed it the first time. Between the um, building inspector, who's really the eyes and ears for the selectmen and the selectmen, right. to deal with it, that would be. Um, and I, so I, I'm fresh to this. Um, Me too. <laughs> what, what is the uh, develop? What has the developer changed? What they've changed, in my opinion, is the subdivision was approved. Uh, this particular lot, lot D, is shown on your tax records as a common land. Um, I emailed Julie Hoyt uh, a copy of the easement. She sent it to the assessor. I don't know the assessor. And his opinion was it's common land. And if it, my understanding, if it's common land, it's part of the subdivision, you can't just be building roads on it 
or driveways. That was approved in the initial subdivision plan. And what will be driveway access, a, a different lot? Yes, what the driveway is going to access is um, if the benishes are him, and this is the lot, the benishes are going to drive, have a driveway right across this lot D, which is common land, right next to our well. Hmm. Well, again, I, I think the thing that jumps out at me is the 75 foot well radius that should be observed. The, that it's there now. Um, I'd have to look at the plots and all that, but it would go through the selectman's office. Well, I understand that, and I and I agree at this point that it's a it's an enforcement issue. But does the planning board have no comment on it, or do they they don't offer any? I opinion? personally don't think it'd be appropriate for us to comment. It's okay. difficult for us to comment on something that's not before us. Um, and it's inappropriate for us to actually do so. Uh, we can, we, our, our, our business when we receive an informal, which this is an informal request, uh, is to, um, to properly provide you with uh, as much information as we can for you to move forward in whatever it is you're trying to do uh, without a vote or a ruling. Otherwise, there would have to be a formal submission formal submission would have to be something that we're receiving from the property owner. We are not an enforcement agency, as, as I think we've heard uh, from Dick. Um, and, and so, yeah, no, we, we really are, are kind of, uh, our hands are really tied on that in terms of what our function is. I mean, what we're, we're allowed to do or not allowed to do. Um, if, if there is uh, something that is, um, has been approved, once it's approved, it truly is up to the select board and their representatives to, to ensure that whatever is happening fits within that approval. Um, and usually uh, it, it, that occurs as a result of someone uh, requiring a change. If you make a change to your property of any kind, um, you have to do it within the rules of the regulations that are set. But once those regulations are being set, that we, we approve, the electorate's approved, um, again, it's up to the select board to, uh, to ensure that those are being uh, properly followed. If we get an opportunity, for example, someone says, as we have from Lap Earth and others, that we want to make a change to the plan, um, and that is considered to be a, a, a change to the subdivision or that sort of thing, that would likely require that uh, uh, that come back before the planning board for review and approval. So, so if I understand correctly, correct me if I'm wrong. It's the it's the select board, it's the selectmen, the board of selectmen that have the enforcement authority. So, if I contact them and explain to them in my own words that a subdivision was approved by the planning board and now someone, in my opinion, is changing it, they can either say yay, nay, or who cares? That's where the research would can, take or place. They, or they can try to Because we'd have to review the what the covenants of the right. uh, subdivision were. Right. Um, I'm sure that's pretty well stated someplace. It may take a little digging to get it out there. <coughs> sure. but um, that's where it would be. Okay. Well, uh, fair enough, and, and, and I didn't pick that up when I read the initial regulations and I called the state and, and they uh, told me that. In fact, uh, they were quite nice and pointed out to me where it was, so I just happened to miss that. So I'll contact the, the uh, board of select. Yeah. Can, can I just make an additional comment? It seemed to me that if anybody approved mm -hmm. of them doing that, the, the selectmen, the, the planning board, and, and again, I'm sort of new on who would do that. If, if they built a driveway and and damaged the the well and your pipes, they'd be legally liable. I mean, they that that what I hear out of this is that you know I think you're maybe barking up the wrong tree. I think that I would get, you know get myself an attorney and let let somebody know that if there's any damage there. I mean that could be a huge cost to somebody that that damaged that and maybe even the the sub-development people that 
that allowed that. I, I agree, but, but also in your regulations, correct me if I'm wrong, there's, there are words to the effect of caring about the uh, safety of the citizens and public water, or water supplies. So I think there's plenty of blame to, to spread around. I, I, don't, I don't doubt that we can bring a suit on them. You know, you can sue anybody for anything these days. Right. Um, but I think that in this case, because it is an approved subdivision, again, being a lake person, it seems straightforward to me that if you then change the subdivision and, and the, the people involved did not go back and ask to change the subdivision, the town has an, uh, uh, an, an enforcement. They're not really changing, they're deviating from the subdivision. Well, de de okay. I mean, it's, I think it's, it's a subtle, but it's an important difference. What's, what's the difference? I'm well, well, there's well, no there's lot lines that have been skewed, you know, they haven't right. said, well, we want three more acres over here, so we're going to move the line. Right. So they haven't changed any of the parameters. Well, and I, guess I didn't really mean that. I just meant that, that there's, been no, there's been no change to the plan. So they're just simply deviating from the plan, and that's where the board select would come in, if there's a deviation. Right. right. Or, 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 or changing how they're making use of the common land. If I understood yeah. what you described here, they're making a, a change in how they use their common land, which is, um, you know, again, I'm not a lawyer, so anything I say, you know, lawyers can come in and say I said it wrong. But, um, I, I have been a member of condominium associations previously, and uh, I've owned two condominiums. Uh, in each case, uh, as a condominium association, we made changes to how we use the common land. Did not require going before a planning board to do that. It would, could be done within the uh, w within the. Uh, you, you have a, 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 a an understanding of a, a contract, really, with all the members of the uh, association and. and uh, rules of the road of how you do that. Uh, and the state of New Hampshire has different ones uh, than the ones from Connecticut, and I've been in both. Uh, and uh, you know, those are prescribed by the state of New Hampshire as to how you can and can't, what you can and cannot do within your own uh, uh, abilities as a board. And some, uh, the other would be required by the town. Um, for example, if uh, I believe if you wish to make a change uh, to a driveway or install a driveway, that requires an application. Okay. Um, and if it requires an application, then it immediately triggers a whole process of review. Um, if they do it and don't do that, then there's a problem they have with the town um, to start. Well, I'd further add, you know, in just reviewing my letter, I have two objections. One, I believe this particular lot is not only common land, it's open space. And it, uh, open, well, open space, as I understand it, based on the, the, uh, the maps the town yep. has, yep. You, you can't do construction on open space. So, but I, 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 I hear what you're saying, I'll take this up with the selectmen. I think before you have to get your own lawyer, that you take the steps. Well, I'm not going to get my own lawyer. No, no, so I, but yes, you're the doing the right yeah. thing right. and the take process. the right steps. Yeah, that's exactly. You hit the so right, the wrong guy for the first shot. Yeah, and that's certainly yeah. an option for us, too. Because yeah, yeah. then if it comes to you know, the real battle, you'll have done the correct thing. Right, right. and that's exactly. our purpose, yes. really, yes. was to find out what to do with the start. And I know your timing is such that at least it's not going to start tomorrow. That's um, and That's our understanding. Yeah. And, well, <laughs> if if they're following the letter, you know, the rules according to the rules of the road, they mm -hmm. ought to have put in a permit application yeah. to begin this process. Right. So, uh, for construction that has right. not occurred. So. Okay, that's good. Yeah. To know. yeah. That's good. Okay. Thank well, you. I uh, I can't think of anything else. I appreciate your time, and and uh, we'll be in touch with the slot now. <laughs> You must be one of them, I I'll guess. I'll be watching for you. <laughs> okay. How's that, how's that for doing a handoff? Huh? All right. <laughs> I hope you won't, won't object if we leave your meeting. Yeah. It'll help to adjourn it quicker. <laughs> now we have some other interesting, exciting things to talk it's about. Thank really you. interesting. The rest of the night, it'll be 
really fascinating. Yeah, I, I know, I see yeah. the yeah. short-term yeah. wrinkle stuff. You can watch the uh, replay. We can watch it. That's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. Here at Jackson All right. Flicks. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank right. you. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Short term? Sure. <coughs> Anybody else got anything else before we jump in here? Yeah. Will you have a capital improvements plan update or are we going to hold on that till next time? Um, yeah. I have talked with the fire department, the uh, police department. Is that why these guys are here? No. Oh. <laughs> well, I want to ask because if they are for that, I would put it up in the agenda so that they could find their way out of here. And the highway department. But. Uh, no, I'm just we thinking you guys. We don't have to do that tonight. All right, they're here for uh, short term. Rentals. All right, great, thank you. Just, just, just thinking about what I did the last class. I tried, guys. I tried. That's your first one. Did have some marks on it? I was thinking. Okay. Yeah. I was looking for the the second draft. Who did you send out? Yeah. Um, so, in the draft that I sent around, I <clears throat> tried to reflect all the comments that we got um, at the last meeting, but I'm going to run through them. I'm going to run through those real quick, make sure I got the gist of what we were discussing. Then we can kind of go back and look at other stuff if you want. Um, so, I changed the between 1 and 30 consecutive nights, which seemed to be the consensus both on the board and with other types of regulations we were looking at, like pre four, I think was one. Um, I sort of made the definition and the purpose. I kind of put, gave those their own sections to make them a little bit more clear. And then for purpose, I, I broke that up. Um, Freeport is even more specific. I think the one thing that Freeport mentioned is that their purpose is to limit non-resident property owners. Um, I didn't know if we wanted to be that sort of specific, but I did try to break it up a little bit, um, make it a little more specific and a little less narrative. But you know, either way, I can certainly add more to that. Like, some of what people would have if we want. Um, we decided to not do a better notifications, so I removed that as part of the fees. Um, just put the language from RSA 541B in requiring name, telephone number, and address of someone in the state who can be contacted if there's an issue. Which is sort of basic. Uh, agent requirements, um, building inspector, uh, 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 housekeeping stuff. Um, for maximum number of people, and that was what we had probably more discussion about than anything, um, I switched it from this basically saying how many people can use it to how many people it can be advertised for. And I think that both helps with responsible use, it prevents, you know, the, the sort of the worst offenders, the people that are renting, you know, advertising houses with four bedrooms for 12 people or 15 people. That's where we seem to get the party house type problems. Um, and so, <coughs> limiting, it, limiting how many people can be advertised to, you know, to, to hold and making that two people per bedroom listed on you know the, the town permit um, we can make that more people um, I don't know. yeah I do okay. I get all kinds of notes I just have this one I'm sure yeah, we, can make, we can make can copies. we make a couple of copies <laughs> keep going <laughs> Uh, 
So in that part, we, we discussed allowing additional children in the room, which I don't think we had any problem with. I just didn't see how we defined that as far as marketing a place goes. Um, so I think, you know, really just, and, and I, I've never seen a short-term rental, you know, marketed as X number of adults plus some additional number of children. And they just don't, I just, they don't do it that no. way, really. No. How many people? Um, so... Sleep six, sleep 25. <laughs> the, the, the only question I have on that is, is cause you, you're listing bedrooms, yeah. but it, it should be... They can't advertise more bedrooms unless the septic is approved. Well, and I did say bedrooms according to list of the town it's oh. a building permit. So it's whatever they were approved for. It's not good. Yeah, I must, I must have missed that. Just the guy just read through it once. Um, we don't really have parking regulations like Laconia does, but I just you know put all the equipment parked on the property and designated parking areas. And then <coughs> we also discussed limiting short-term rentals to 25 rentals per unit annually, unless the unit or another unit on the same property is occupied by at least one full-time resident. So the idea behind that was that that still protected <coughs> second homers, it so it gave them the ability to rent in their property out uh, a reasonable number of times, also gave the property owner that's living on the property or even renting it long term, but also short term renting a portion of it to have unlimited rentals. It really was designed to limit rentals for property owners that don't, that aren't resident to the town, basically. Um, that's pretty much it. The additional things that we'll need to work on are fees um, and bonds. And you know, I noticed, like, like with the fees, I, I think that's fair. But it was also saying that it would go back to uh, if, if somebody didn't get a permit to have an Airbnb and they get caught renting it, the fine, it looks like to me, unless I, I misread it, the fine would still be only the 275. Well, I didn't put a fine in there. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. I, I thought it would that be was the okay. And that, that's going to need to be high enough. I mean, if you're renting a place out for 300 a night, then you know, being fined 150 a night, you're going to still rent it out. Yeah. So it needs, to be, it needs to be high relative to the amount of money you're getting for it. Um, I think the fees should, you know, I don't think they should be particularly onerous um, because we don't want people to. Yeah, I think some amount of short-term rental is good for the town and certainly is, is good for some property owners and we don't want to stand in the way of that. Um, so I think the fees should be, you know, whatever reasonably covers Kevin's time to, you know, do an inspection or Jay's time, whoever's doing it. <coughs> you know, we talk with them to find out what that cost is and put that in there. My thought was that <clears throat> before we get into that type of detail, it might be good to pass all this by Peter Malia, make sure that we're not straying in some direction that, you know. That well, you can't do that at all. That we can't correct. <laughs> yeah, we have to correct sooner than later. No sense of going to a public hearing or something that we can't use any of. Yeah, you did a nice job writing this up, though. Yeah. Well, mostly it's just Laconian, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, good job, good job. <laughs> but, the fee is, but the fee is different from the fee of registering shouldn't prohibit somebody from doing it. But if they violate something, right, right. that's when you. We, we want, right, we want the fine to be such that they don't, that someone doesn't think, well, I, okay. I can keep renting and pay the fine and still make money. Right. Um, then, Bill, I, I, I sent you that uh, information from the Mount Washington Valley uh, Real Estate Board. Yes. I take it you didn't. Didn't pass it around. I did not. I well, I have it here. You're welcome to. And I, I would like to pass it around. And, and again, th this is not my opinion. But we'll, in our last discussion, if you recall, I was talking about what, not my opinion, but what we might be up against. And if you read this, you can see that uh, the, the Realty Board has some uh, serious uh, backlash in some cases, but also. Um, here, it, it actually lists 
information that I didn't know as to uh, what in fact were, um, you know, what, what's going on in town as far as number of rentals, how much money and whatever. So I thought it was interesting. I, I, you know, I don't think we need to discuss it now, but just the whole, the whole idea is that, you know, uh, I think it's, it's great to know what the, the other side is looking at so that when we um, construct, uh, you know, our, our proposal that we're, we're not hitting a, a brick wall. So that, that's the purpose of that. Well, and again, I, you know, personally, I think what we're really trying to strike is a balance. Right, right? exactly. To, some, to a degree, short-term rentals are good for the area. They are a, for many people, a better vacation experience than mm -hmm. staying in a hotel or a motel. I mean, for me personally, that's the case. And so people that come to the area, stay in, in an Airbnb or VRBO, in many cases enjoy their stay more so than they would otherwise, and that's you know, good for the area. Um, so there's an element of it that, you know, that we want to keep, but it also comes with costs, and you know, as it increases, the costs also increase, and that's you know, the balance we're trying to strike. And so there is, you know, it's neither the case that, you know, that short-term rentals are completely decimating housing or hotel industry or et cetera, but it's also not the case that they're not having impact on housing or hotel business or neighborhoods. There was an article in, in the Conway Daily Sun today, I don't know if you saw that, and it, it talked about that uh, one of the effects of, of the short-term rental is it's raising property values in Conway, therefore it's raising their tax rate, which, <clears throat> which you know, I think is a double-edged sword. Well, it's, it's yeah, it, it's raising people's wealth, too, so, right. you know, exactly. Right. Exactly. with and wealth comes taxes, that's just the way the world works. But the, the, the other... But, it, but, that's, but that's where it is starting to restrict people's ability to buy homes right. Right. for residents. Right. But actually, if you look at it in the longer run, it raises uh, property values in, you know, it's not going to happen in a year, but it'll actually should lower the actual tax rate on those property values. Well, you're correct. I mean, the, the town needs a certain amount of taxes right. one way or the other, but, but it's still, it, as property values go up, it's harder and harder for people to purchase properties that don't have sufficient income. Right, right. And yeah, that's, I mean, <coughs> this is a single data point, but, you know, house went for sale in Jackson for $220,000, and it's a house, not a, not a condominium, so it's a super rarity. Within 48 hours, there were five offers on the table, three of which were explicitly for short-term short rental yeah. only. Um, the property, the, the person who bought the property had to offer 5000 over the listing and still wasn't the highest offer, but because of the letter saying that she was going to be living as a home, she wanted to make Jackson her home, she yeah. lived here before, she was awarded the sale. Yeah. Um, but that's just, that's what's it happening. Is. And a lot of, you know, the, I, I listened to Teresa Bennett, you know, a lot of statistics, but a lot of this is, is very new. It's happening right now. And so, you know, when you look at census data from 10 years ago or, you know, that sort of thing, that doesn't capture what's happening on the ground right now. Right. This is a brand new thing. Um, no, no, it's just... Right. It's, and it's hard to deal with the arguments, you know, looking at some of these arguments. Some of them I agree with. It, and, you know, like and, and you look at them, the others are... Uh, and, and some are very... Uh, much an opinion it's, uh, it's based, based on, on your idea of how things should work as right. for example some folks feel that uh, you should give people a thousand dollars a month uh, you know, just off the top of the head others feel that maybe we should be raising the minimum wage right. um, either would probably attain a similar objective but both would have impacts of different kinds in different ways and um, and I think you'd have people lined up on both sides of that conversation saying this is wrong or this is wrong. And, so, and folks would say you shouldn't do anything at all. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I thought that uh, 
it was important that we take a look at what you know the uh, yeah. possibly the opposition and they they got their own agenda. Um, again, it's not uh, I don't take an opinion. It, it, it also on. taking a look at these, I don't think uh, most of what's here uh, really does not impact any of what we're proposing. No. Um, I don't see any, uh, in fact, we went through, it, you know, I, I kind of did this, and it's probably why I didn't bring it, is because I went through this and, and I don't think there's, I don't think there's anything right now actually that cuts into this. No. They're just looking at profit. Pardon? Real estate agents are just looking at profit. Well, yeah, and, and, and well, just, you know, I think we, you know, the, 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 the whole argument of it, you know, it, 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 it increases the property value for everyone. Um, you know, if if that were, if that's the case, and it does, um, it does mean that, um, like as you say, we we simply remove uh, homes from being uh, available to a certain group of people uh, entirely, and for everyone else, it means that. They have exposure to paying potentially higher tax rates, higher taxes, because the assessments will be done unevenly. As all as you know, assessors will say, "Well, we don't do that," but it happens, and certainly balance out over time. But there's the opportunity for uh, folks to incur higher uh, tax rates um, in, in the short term, for sure. Um, but then again, you know, if, if if all our property values went up by ten percent, um, and it meant that we lost thirty percent of our full-time residents, would that be a good no. result for the community? And I think that um, that would that would be a, a, a drastic change to who and what we are. And in fact, I think the town would implode if that were to be seriously implode because you wouldn't have enough people to, uh, you know, if you end up with only 400 residents, full-time residents, mm -hmm. um, who's going to be on the board of selectmen? Who's going to be on the planning board? Who's going to be on the fire department? Who's going to be, uh, you know, doing all the jobs that need to get done? Yeah. That's the other perspective, I guess, on that. But I think Andy would be in uh, being a plumber, I work on a lot of things. For the most part, they, they really, I, I don't see an issue. It's rare that you find one that abuses it. North Conway, there's been quite a few, but up here, you know, the Barton Jackson area. But you talk to different bed and breakfast people in the town here, mm -hmm. and they're disturbed because they feel that, that if there's too many, it's, it's competition. It's competition for them now. It's taking, and they're taxpayers too, yeah. and residents. That's your Jay's comments. Come on down. Well, before I forget, Hotley's absolutely right. I mean, I've been watching this for a couple of years, and if I look at 150 to 100 rentals that come through Airbnb or whatever brands they are. Um, I'm only seeing one or two issues. I compare it to the fireworks ordinance. State of Hampshire has a fireworks ordinance, Town Jackson doesn't. We don't have any problems. So we don't create an ordinance to do away with fireworks if we're not having problems. Uh, I'm not seeing a lot. We didn't get not one single campfire complaint this year, as an example. Um, I mean, there, there's definitely a few properties that having issues uh, but if you're having two or five or seven issues or have one person complain is that more to create an ordinance for i don't think so but i just want to mention that point you got but. and the ordinance is not just about sort of those problem issues right. it's also um yeah. you know, looking at available housing yeah. it's, it's looking at neighborhoods and whether people have neighborhoods around them anymore and that sort yeah. of thing so the sheet that I got, I think this is the sheet that you went over, 
first. Yeah, let me, let me see if I switch graphs. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So let's go from the top, start at the top. Um, there's a bunch of terminology that would be really nice if it went along with our terminology for the five safety side of things. Sure. Um, for example, you know, this is a, this is a short term login, and this is the very first word. Um, Login is its own occupancy for us. Um, it should probably be worded. I'm not sure if it matters, but maybe you word it or something like that. Um, and then as I went down through, it kind of seemed like that first paragraph, whether it is being selected or not, I don't know. And then the purpose part, I thought was really good. When we get down in the middle. Um, and in the first paragraph where you thought it was a little selective, how did you? Well, it's this short, short term lodging. You mean just short term rentals should be this term? Or? Well, let me, is that as, I go, do you mean something as I go different? through this, you'll, when we get down to the bottom, you'll, you may okay. figure out what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, because from the, and remember, I'm here from the fire safety yeah. side of things. I'm not here for DES. I'm not here for zoning. It's fire safety. Um, because I have different occupancies I deal with. I deal with one and two family. And then it goes to roaming, uh, roaming and lodging. Mm -hmm. Then it jumps up to hotels. And it jumps up to apartments. So that's where the break is for us. And so, uh, given that short-term rental can sort of, you know, it can be in any sort of, you know, type of building, does, um, does the way that we define it, um, basically we're trying to define what a short-term rental or a place of short-term <coughs> rentals is something that would normally be considered a residence. The only, the only reason I mentioned so, that very first part was mm -hmm. lodging is very specific. Oh, okay, okay, right. Say. But I, I just, I'm not, I'm, I'm more asking just your opinion by saying that a short term, a place of short term rentals is a place that you would normally consider a residence as opposed to a hotel or an Airbnb or a, We haven't figured that out yet. Does, I spent. Is that something that, that makes sense to you? I mean, in not even legal sense, but does that. There's, there's a lot of gray area and there's a lot of stuff that don't make sense to me. Yes, three days ago, the fire marshal was in town, mm -hmm. the fire marshal. Not the assistant, the fire marshal. He was coming through town. And I wanted to go over some code interpretation with him. Mm -hmm. So he was here. And we had really, really good, some good conversation. Um, the tough part here with trying to figure any of this out and how you, how you, how do you say what occupancy short-term rentals is? Uh, the fire marshal's office can't figure it out. They've been working on it, and it's. It's, there's a lot of gray area, a lot of political part, and a lot of constitutional stuff in it. And they're having a really tough time figuring it out. So I really don't know how we're going to figure it out if they can't. But anyway, um, so it's, there's a lot of gray stuff on the fire safety side of things. It's zoning, but each town can set up their own zoning. One of my concerns, the big concern I'm going to get to here in a minute, is making sure the stuff that you guys think you want to put in it doesn't contradict what I'm going to step in and say you can or can't do. Mm -hmm. That's the big item. Okay. Um, the other minor item I had was in number one, sh the application process you had as part of the application approval process the dwelling unit must pass a joint inspection by the fire department and the building inspector. Mm -hmm. That right there says that the fire department and the building inspector have to do it. I would have that say and or. Because that way if the building inspector is on vacation, you can't do the inspection without him there. If I'm on vacation, he can't do it without me there. That way it's more. Um, it, 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 Does it need to be a joint effort? I guess it, no, it's this no, no, it could be just the building inspector. Just, it, 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 the intent here was not that you guys doing it together. But I'll just say some words. But it's and. There. It says and. Yeah. So it and. says and. And is an and. And yeah. means both. It's just like when I deal with when something says shall on a code thing, it means I have to you do it. You have to do it. Yeah. So, so it, it, it either says you may or something. 
It's yeah. very specific. It's very, uh, it's really important for what we do on the code side of things. So it'll make it either the fire department or the board. And then, and then the next few words, it says, you know, limited. I don't know whether that's a bad word. That, that's kind of a lawyer question, I guess. Shall include? Shall we include? Well, let's just say, uh, shall be the following. Yeah. Shall include, but well, not include limited to. That way you can uh, can't you just say that the building search shall be lit, uh, shall be the, just, just shall some word of stuff yeah, that no, no, should no, be it's a, it's a that's great that's suggestion. I don't know exactly how to word it, but yeah, that's, um, that's, shall include. So and then there's um, oh, some other word and stuff um, like you've got smoke detectors must be installed in areas defined by the town's adopted codes. Mm -hmm. Those aren't town adopted codes; those are state RSAs. So you can't. I wouldn't word that as a town code. State RSA. So, so there's a bunch of words. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and things that you guys. I, I, thought, I just thought in our building permit stuff we adopted the. You, know, you, you adopt it, but it's still a state okay. regulation. Like if I come to your house and say. And I, and I, and I think I remember having a, a big discussion about that. And actually, I was on your side where I was saying <laughs> we don't adopt it. It's no, there. Right, right, right. It's right. there. We don't have and to adopt it. Let them. Yeah, he, he's your, I remember he's that. your advocate on that. Yeah. <laughs> um, we should not write anything that's already been written to the town. You know, codes. same thing as, as you go down through it. It says <laughs> basement space, space um, no basement space shall be used as sleeping areas. Um, and it says by town code. It's, it's, that's not a town code. But it that's, says, it's, 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 Jay, it's are, code. aren't there supposed to be two egresses from a basement? Yeah, I, I mean, a basement, a bedroom has to have an egress window. Uh, if you had an open basement, mm -hmm. there's some stuff with no walls, and like you had a bunk room, and there's no individual walls. You, the doorway kind of, you might get away without, I'd have to look at the code again, but you might get away without a window because the door it's the big open area right to the, right to the door. Uh, once a minute you sprinkle something, and then all everything changes. It, well, I, I, I thought the... But usually, yes, an egress, a, a bedroom is supposed to have an egress window and a door. But it's it, called the secondary means of egress, yeah, right. and the stairs up will be one egress. Right. And Even there's got to be an egress out from there. And, I, and then you have the egress out. Yeah. And I, I showed a house that you couldn't get out of that basement in a million years. Yeah. I didn't buy it, and I wouldn't sell it. It's got to be two. So the next item is the big one, number of people in a dwelling unit. So I'll do the best I can again. This is going to take a minute. <laughs> so this, this is going to take a lot of work if you guys want to try to limit how many people you put in a dwelling. And, um, and to be specific, we're not limiting really how many people can be can use a dwelling. We're limiting how many people the, the unit can be advertised for. <laughs> so when you look up a list on Airbnb or VRBO, sleep twenty five. You know that's wrong. You, you can't say <laughs> sleep twenty five if it has five beds. Well, not necessarily depending on how they built the house and what the occupancy of the building is. If it's a rooming and lodging establishment, you can put sixteen people in it. Right. If it's a hotel, you can put over sixteen. Right. Well, we're, per, per, we're, we're, we're saying is is that we would we would limit the amount that they could advertise to the number of bedrooms plus two, basically. It, so, it, it, in other words, not, you know, we've got uh, three bedrooms sleep 16. You know, that's, that's what you see in these ads. And I've, I've been in houses that they're set up that way. they got bunks, 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 bunks. Mm -hmm. So, for me, so the, the reason I'm saying you're going to be, going to have to figure out how you word that is, depending on you, how you word it may contradict what I go in and tell them. If you tell them you can put because mine goes by occupancy. So a building, one and two family dwelling, can have a family, which is a lot of gray there because it's how you define your family, and up to three outsiders. It's all you can do in a single family dwelling. Two family, one, it's called one and two family dwelling. So the minute you put a firewall down the middle of it, which the last time we met when I was here a year ago, two years ago, I had a different interpretation of that, which the fire marshal corrected me on. 
I thought you could take one house and put two families in it with three outsiders each, and that's not incorrect. To do the two family thing, it'd have to be like a condo, a, a, a duplex with a firewall down the middle. So a one family dwelling can only have one family and three outsiders. Could be 20 people. Depending on the definition of a family, that's right. one of the major one great, heck of a family. What is the definition of a family? But what you're saying is that there's no limit to the number of people. Very great. That's the difficult one of the difficult things the fire marshals have with it because <clears throat> there was an old definition to Webster's dictionary. When in the code world, when code doesn't define family, you have to go to the dictionary. What, what so the new def and we have to use the newest edition. The new definition is very vague, um, and that's the difficult time that I'm having with it but because. But a house here that's got two bedrooms. You would walk in and you would see five bunks in one bedroom and five beds in another. Correct. You, you could you not. could have a bedroom it's allowed. and for whatever reason it's allowed. whatever reason the whole family might want to sleep in the same bedroom. Strange family. So so you know, young kids may want to still sleep with their parents. So if the family is a husband and a wife and they got six kids. They may, they may be young enough when they don't want them sleeping in a separate room and they're in a strange house. And, and this is why we got, we had pretty much the same yeah. discussion at the last yeah. meeting, so that's why we switched it to what it's advertised for. The, yeah. big, the big problem for me, once you go over that one, fam, that one family and three outsiders, which is a one and two family dwelling, which is not, I don't have a lot of authority. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of stuff I can legally inspect for. Mm -hmm. Because in New Hampshire, they protect. Your house, you, you just protect that. The minute it jumps from one and two family to rooming and lodging, which is up to 16 people on a transient basis, which I've got some definitions here for you, um, the, the big item is the building has to be sprinkled. So the minute you, get you, four you, people and you, rent, you, you come up with your family and you want to bring four friends, you can't rent that house. It has to be unless it's sprinkled. That's the that's same with a basement. You, if it's sprinkled, it doesn't have to have a second egress. What, what, what about this, Jay? When you did your your inspection, and what if you could put down recommended maximum uh, occupancy? Could you do something like that? I mean, it's not going to hold. But not these. Let me hand this out. But, this, but as we have it written, we're not. We wouldn't be asking. <coughs> Jay, it's nothing recommended. It's it's one and two family says this. We, 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 says we, this. Don't, we don't feel we could put you in a box like that right. either. Right. So, so what we would do is just give you an opportunity to say, look, when when I go through, I observe their, um, you know, the, the card on the on the uh, septic on this is two bedrooms or three bedrooms, um, and that's it. It's 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 not a it's not a it's not a judgment. It's just simply, it's a, if, if you wish to do a short-term rental and advertise a short-term rental, you take your number of bedrooms that's approved on your septic, multiply it times two, and then add two at the end, and you're done. And you don't have, you know, that, that's it. And that's just for what it's advertised for. That's we're just not, for we're advertised not that would be a, the use of... It has nothing to do with the compliance or, you know... You advertise for in any published listing. Other form of marketing shall be two people for each bedroom listed on the town issue. Okay, so you just did. So, so I just saying they can only list it for so much. Yeah, so I have a five exactly. bedroom. Yeah, I have a not five what you can inspect for. Right, it's just what gets listed. So I have a five so, bedroom home. I can list as a C twelve. So there's another hole. There's another whole problem with the, the short-term rental stuff is um, the amount of them that are being overloaded. The enforcement on that is oh, measurable, difficult. Yeah, but how would, you, how would you enforce it? I mean, I mean how would you, you enforce it? A cease and desist order. Yeah. I shall give you an example. Town very close to here had a recent issue with a Fire department showed up for alarm issue. When they walked in, there's 30 people sleeping everywhere. 
Yeah. Okay. All right. Thirty people, and there were mat. There were these little mats yeah. all yeah. throughout the yeah. hallways. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, that's what we want to avoid. What's going on here? That's where they were sleeping. So, so you. So have, basically, a cease and desist. Yeah, but you you have a right to do that, right? Me and the fire marshal. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if it's eminent danger, right? If you overload your house with two people and it's a fairly safe house, is it eminent danger? I can't throw you out of it. It's got to be eminent danger. That's a key word for us. So help me out then. If if we if we say what we're trying to say, how often would and, and, and people actually do what, what they advertise. <laughs> How often would we get into an issue where you'd run into that? Um, you know, if someone, if we say, you know, it's this sleep six and they, and, and of course, when they bring 30 people into the sleep six, then, what I that, see, that's going to be a problem. But what I've seen by looking at advertising and looking around town is I know there's, I know there's two houses where it was being done, large groups of people. Mm -hmm. and I, seen some advertising for large groups of people. So I know a couple of the, I've heard stories that the majority of them are, are definitely above and beyond a one or two family dwelling by mm -hmm. definition, by my definition. Right. Um, I'm gonna go back to what I said earlier. The fire marshal's office, who's a pretty professional office, mm -hmm. it's just, making their heads spin. Yeah, and I can see how there's a gray area here where you know, what we're talking about is limiting what they can advertise okay. for. So if someone, you know, rents a place and okay. says, I'm, you know, I'm going to bring six people okay. and the, the owner says, great, and then they bring, that, 30, that, and they right. bring 30 people instead. Yeah, that's and still not going to prevent compliance. I mean, right. if, if, so, if, you, if you look at that and say it's a problem, no, then, And yeah. what I was saying is that they, they've complied with the short-term rental regulation right. by advertising for right. six. They brought 30 people, and I guess I don't know if any existing regulation, you know, it's 30 people that are all not the same family, because maybe it's a big, you know, it's a, it's a uh, fraternity. Well, yeah, one of the, one of the other difficulties is the, def the definition of family. If you come up here with 42 of your religious friends, is that okay? <laughs> you say, this is a family, this is my family. So, mm -hmm. That's what the fire marshal's office can't wrap their head around. And, so that, that's a compliance issue, but it's not really a short-term rental compliance issue now. It's just a... Or, or throw a MacLear Cousins. All, all 28 of them that go in your cabin and all the ones. Yeah. Well, no Airbnb is changing its rules after the disaster in California. One bedroom, eight bunks. Oh, the shooting. The, the, the shooting and the fire that occurred and people were killed in the party house. I mean, Airbnb is now officially going to announce that they that's cannot correct. advertise party houses you cannot, you cannot advertise a party house. Is that, is that going to be that, that's, no, different comment, but that's protected. But, I no, you, I you had a comment, please. I sure. Did. Now that they are actually just pretending they're doing that. Right. I've already been contacted. I had about 50 of them, and it was like a two seconds it took me to, to do what I needed to do. So that's just them covering themselves. They're not really doing anything. Oh. Uh, my comment was on the advertising. I'm sorry, can you write? Sorry, my name, my name is Keith Bradley. I'm from the Jackson residence. Uh, I'm a licensed real estate agent. I own a uh, vacation rental company in, in the back for 15 years now. Um, and I just want to, I have a lot, lot to say, but I'm listening right now. But on your advertising thing, I think that's very, I don't know if you can do that. I don't know if that's the right way to restrict what somebody can advertise. I don't know if you can constant, constitutionally stop them from advertising. And then that turns into even a more gray area. You go on Airbnb, there's a box you can put sleeps how many six i can put my six but then down in the description i can say large home can easily accommodate 15 is but no i'm I only advertising six well, I, i'm large just home accommodates 15 i'm just describing the property like well i'm describing i know but that's what i'm saying be careful with that because i don't know how you would even enforce that you're gonna pay somebody to read everybody's descriptions all the time and at a $275 per violation opportunity each time and daily, perhaps, I think that would be maybe prohibited. Maybe. If, if you were constitutionally allowed to stop the way somebody was advertising, I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure you are. Um, one recommendation I would have, I've talked to Jay about this occupancy thing for years, way before it became a hot topic now. Um, and if you were going to try to do a maximum occupancy, I think the best way is to put it back on 
the homeowner that you're going to have an application process it sounds like so instead of stating any maximum occupancy you have them sign off that they're not going to violate these RSAs that Jay is talking about and then it's back on them on, on their people yeah but and the problem is that the RSAs are not very clear in this well they situation. are because it's going to say right now you can't have five people here they're not all related and you know that's what it says and that's going to say also going to say if you go over 16 people you need sprinklers the so large groups are clear yeah, yeah these people it's going to sign I mean, off i had one but i had one in town that we actually had some complaints on and we've been watching it because it's a big house building and there was a Boy Scout troop there <laughs> with Boy Scout leaders that clearly, clearly was an illegal. Boy Scouts don't need to be sprinkled. They have all their, their, their clearly, they're prepared clearly for everything. The right? definition <laughs> of a one and two family club. Yeah. The other, the other kicker here is the zoning ones that you already have doesn't allow anything above a one and two family dwelling outside of this village. Yeah. Bed and breakfasts yeah. aren't allowed outside of the village. Anything room and lodging isn't allowed outside of the village by your own one. I disagree with the bed, bed and breakfast. It's a, uh, I think it's allowed. The cottage and I didn't see it. I looked three times. Because yeah. it, it doesn't it, it, show it a gray or bed, bed and yeah. breakfast are allowed, but not uh, not a dwelling that's in excess of two yeah. unless it's grandfather yeah. grandfather units. So, so the only. Um, because a, a, a bed and breakfast is a Roman college in establishment. By, 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 by right, 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 right. But it's a home industry. I think that's right. where, yeah, it is. It may be by your zone, and yeah. it maybe by your zone, and you allow it as a home industry, but I, it, it had, would have to be sprinkled. It's and yeah, so existing, regulation. Well, I've got a call in the NFPA right now trying to find out when the sprinkler code in rooming and lodging was enacted. Because anything that is existing, like something before that date, would be okay without sprinklers. Because the code talks about any new roaming and lodges, but it all goes by the code of the day. So I'm trying to find out from NFPA as we speak when the sprinkler was added to the roaming and lodging <coughs> occupancy. And that would tell us which existing bed and breakfasts would need to be sprinkled. So, so take an extreme example. They have a place that's advertised that, that has, you know, it's, it has um, permitted for two bedrooms. Of, you know, which the septic approval is for a particular house, and they're advertising, or at least allowing it to be rented for, you know, 15 people.